Is there any novel that's created such a sensation in America that is more prominent than Catch-22? Well, Joseph Heller's written other novels, and now he has done, guess what? He's written a sequel to Catch-22. It is called Closing Time, and I am pleased to have the author with us this evening, Joe Heller. Welcome. Great to have you here. Why'd you do this? I mean, everybody, everything that you wrote after Catch-22, uh, people always sort of brought Catch-22 into a review of it. None of them were sequels. And now you finally say, well, here it is. Here's the sequel. We catch up with John Yasarian uh, when he is 68 years old. And, and your question is, why did I do yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> why did you decide at this stage when you're 70? When you're 70. I, I was not 70. When you started. Yeah. Right. I was about 64. I thought I'd be 68 right. when I finished it. Uh, invention, pride, temptation, and the old ambition to do a novel unlike any I had ever done before and unlike novels that uh, other people did. It's, just, it's the same impulse, I think, that inspired Catch-22. You believe that this novel, along with Catch-22 and Something Happened, will be the three novels that, that you are recognized for? Yes. I, you, you, you're making a statement or you're asking me a question? Asking a question. I, I would say yes, and, and it's based on, <laughs> on a statement being made by a large number of people who've been interviewing me all summer long. They do think of three, three, three great novels or the three best novels of Joe Heller are Catch-22, Something Happened in Closing Time. Why Closing Time in that August list? Because <laughs> you asked the people who rated that highly. Uh, why do I rate Closing yeah. Time? Uh, I think Closing Time is a, is a very broad novel, a more inventive novel than Catch-22. Catch-22 has about five notes or four, four or five colors that, uh, uh, that were appropriate for that novel at that time. Closing Time en encompasses everything that was stated in uh, Catch-22 and done in Catch-22, along with the 40 or 50 years yeah. between the end of World War II and now. How much of it is ruminations of Joe Heller's consideration of mortality? Uh, the same consideration of mortality that exists in Catch-22 and, and in all my works. In all my works, and for reasons I can't explain, uh, in all my works there is a consciousness of danger, danger to life. Right. And in Catch-22 there are at least three people who are so, such severe hypochondriacs that they keep lists of diseases and possible accidents. That persists in closing time, but closing time has a much different tone, a, a, a much calmer mood than Catch-22 because the, the setting in which it's written is different and the decades in which it's written is different and the, the period in which we live is, much, is it, so calm, it's almost stagnant. Is it influenced by your illness, the battle that you had to fight no, with no, was I, it Gala, I, Galen, what was it called? Guillain-Barre I, 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 I would say no, not, not in the slightest. Not in the slightest? No, I think... But that, you went through hell, didn't you? Well, it, <laughs> I went through a serious illness that was very uh, frightening for about six or seven months, and then more frightening for the next few months where I didn't know how much of my muscle power would come back. Yeah. I don't think it had any influence, influence on this. If we had more time, I could take you to a closing time and show you that every theme in it has had appeared in my other novels prior to my illness. Yeah. This is a very con a highly considered book using very much of my education and a great deal of my experience as a novelist. Yeah. In, in fact, part of the meaning of closing time is that I think it, it tends to close out the questions raised or the subject raised in my first novel, which is Catch-22. Which is? Which is what happens to people in World War II who appeared in fiction, yeah. which would be Osari and a mile of mind, right. by, uh, uh, paired with what happened to people like myself who were in World War II and did not appear in fiction. What has happened to us between 1945 and now? Is, is this, is it the same tone as no, you? No, not at all. Not, no, just the way the mood of the country is not the same now as it was in 1945 and 50 and 61 when I wrote. Uh, it's not the same tone. It's, it's, it's a different subject matter. Yeah. Some people, critics, have said the most moving parts about it are when you consider, I mean, the notion of World War II veterans yeah. and their feelings about well, I, I think what they Death. said what they said were the two characters I introduced in Closing Time who were not in Catch-22. And they're two Jewish... This is Lou and Sammy. Lou and Sammy, both of them based on my own experience, both of them treated in the novel in a way different 
than I've ever treated characters in a novel before. They, they are treated respectfully, they are treated seriously, they are treated realistically. Whereas the Osarian sections of these books are as fantastic as they were in Catch-22. They are very moving. Yeah. And, and they, they intended to be read as true stories. The fact that they're based on a large number of true incidents doesn't make them a true story. But, and, and you believe they're the most Jewish characters you've ever written? They're the most Jewish characters I've ever written. More than that, they're the only fully realized characters I've ever written. We use the, we use the term three-dimensional characters when we criticize or we teach writing. I've never de I've never uh, developed character in any of my books. In Catch Twenty Two, there's not one character you would say is fully developed, and in none of my novels is that true. But in Closing Time, Sam Singer and Lou Rabinowitz and their wives and their reference to their children, they are three-dimensional, fully realized characters with an unusual result that emerged that I was not aware of until it was finished. Right. And that is that the women are treated well in this book and marriage is treated as a desirable state. Uh, Catch-22, most people say, was about trying to stay alive. Mm -hmm. Yes? Well, yes. It was about trying to keep yourself alive. Yes. And, and the, the the craziness of war and all right, that, yes. but staying alive yes, yes. and all that. Yes. What's this about then? This, this is about the realization that no matter how well you succeed in staying alive, as Yosarian has done, that sooner or later you're not going to succeed. Old age is uh, age, and is in, it's inevitable. At the end of this novel, Yosarian is 71. Sam Singer was 71. There are really two endings. Mm -hmm. Yosarian being Yosarian in the character fiction is leaving the security of an underground shelter to keep a date with a girl who's carrying his child and wants to give birth to it. And he goes up with the quixotic notion that the three of them will live happily forever after. We know that's impossible. Sam Singer follows it in the, his, his paragraphs in the book. He's 71 years old. He's, his wife has died. He's going to see a friend in Australia. He's resigned. He's settling back, listening to his favorite symphony on an airplane, which is Mahler's Fifth. Right. And he's reading a book by one of his favorite authors, which are the short stories of Thomas Mann. And both of those things would, would, would tell the reader, well, Sam Singer is 71 and knows where he's headed. Yeah. He's headed for Australia, but he's also headed sooner or later for the end of life. Yeah. Let me talk about you. Um, will you write another novel, or is this it? No, I have to write another novel. You know why? Because why? you're not going to invite me back here every night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. Write a novel until you well, get on this show. Well, yeah. that's, that's, that's as good an incentive as any. As you need. No, I will write another novel because that's You don't have to write a novel to come back. <laughs> no, but, but, but are well, you going to write another one? Of course. You are? I, I'll certainly start another novel. Have you started one? No. No. But I, I never have started a novel until a year, close to a year after my preceding one had been published. I have no idea for another novel. And it is said that you begin a novel with a sentence. Yes. Yeah. You hear a sentence that I, gives you the yeah. idea for a novel. I sit around doing nothing, and I'm thinking all the time, fantasizing, and the sentences come to me, and if they lead to other sentences, and if those combination of sentences suggest a character or a setting, I begin thinking seriously now, about it. All my novels began that way. Now, what sentence gave you this novel? In the middle of his second week in the hospital, Yosarian dreamed of his mother, and he knew again that he was going to die. Now, that's the start of the third chapter, which introduces Yosarian. I thought of that. I thought of Yosarian in the hospital being my age, yeah. or approximately my age, and realizing that he's still alive, but sooner or later he's going to pass away. And I thought this might make a good novel, particularly as a completion or a successor novel to Catch-22. It's a sequel in the same way that all my ideas yeah, right. are bizarre. Right. There's a 50-year interval and there's no But there's to also, it. here's what's funny about this, there's a point in, the, in this novel in which the vice president says, this is just like Catch-22. <laughs> yes, right. Now that's a reference to something outside the novel. Uh, there's much, much in this book that's sort of biographical. There's another reference when Yosarian is talking to his son, telling him how he got out of the army. And his son said, did you ever go to Sweden? Yeah. Uh, I thought you wrote away to Sweden. He says, no, that only happens in the movie. In the <laughs> movies. Uh, now, Catch-22 ends with Yosarian still in the hospital running out of the door. M many people who saw the movie thinks it ends with Alan Ark in the yellow raft paddling to Sweden. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. 
You live now primarily on Long Island. I live in, uh, I live entirely on Long Island now right. as a result of my illness. Yeah. It's a long story, but since I got out of the hospital, I've been living on Long Island in East Hampton. Mm. It, it wasn't in any way a rejection of the city. No. You know, you didn't sort no, of come I, to the I conclusion out, that New York no, was I not... No, I came out of the hospital in a wheelchair. And I had no place to go. My first wife and I had been separated a year. We were going through a divorce. I had no comfortable place to live. We had that house in East Hampton. We not, never really used it in the winter. And I went out there with a nurse and a friend, Speed Vogel, right. to take care of me for the summer. And we all liked it there. And, and the nurse liked me, and I liked the nurse. So you married her? I married her, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dear reader, I married her. Yeah. And do you and Speed and, and the group of guys get together for these not, gourmet no, lunch no. thing? What would you call the gourmet club? It or used something? to be the gourmet club, meal, wonderful meals in Chinatown. But you we, just gorge yourself on food. Yeah. I can eat. I, I stop eating when I run out of time. <laughs> no, but we've separated. Mel Brooks is in California. Yeah. Mario Puzo doesn't want to come into the city. I don't come into the city. Yeah. And Speed Vogel. Well, I heard you still would meet out on, in East Hampton or somewhere no, out there. No, we, or we, somewhere out there. No, we go, for, we, we go for, for quiet lunches occasionally, but that's about it. Yeah, who, it used to be you and Mel Brooks. And, and um, our, our Chinese artist, Nagut Lee. Who, a, a painter, and Chinese a, a painter. painter. yes. And, you, and, and, and Speed Vogel, and yeah. a man named... And there Julie, was a businessman, was there? Julie, business? Julie Green, it's the only person we knew who had a job. <laughs> you call him the only person with a yeah, job. Yeah, he's the only one, only one who worked regularly. Yeah, it's always great to have you here. Um, as I said, we did this on Night Watch, and, and, and it's good to have you back in print. Uh, closing time. It says right here the sequel to Catch-22. Well, I think it is a, se a sequel to Catch-22. I might write another. The sequel. Or maybe another sequel to Catch-22. I can write another sequel. I mean, sequel. Yossarian still lives, and so, <laughs> yes. you know, so well, maybe he'll... I might in 30 years, adventures. when, when Yossarian is 98 and I'm 98 <laughs> and I'm running out of ideas, I might And I'll still be right here. You know? And I'll be back. And, and Lou and Sammy may still be around, huh? <laughs> no, no, no. Lou is gone in this yeah. one. Yeah. He's passed away. All right. Uh, I thank you very much. Okay. Great to have you here. Joe Heller, closing time.